Hey, so I wanted to talk about Psalm 23 in light of the situation in our nation right now. This is not meant to be a, a true commentary and, and not a teaching, but rather how I read this in our world right now. This chapter was brought up in our church's prayer time on Wednesday, so I've been thinking about it. So the first verse says, the Lord is my shepherd. This is written for believers. This is a word for those that are trusting Jesus as Lord. It's a qualifying statement, and that when we trust him as our shepherd, then the rest of this applies. I personally believe this psalm is an expose of what it looks like to walk in the spirit and not to be only aware of the physical world. Yes, we can see what's happening in the world, but we should be looking at those things through the promises of God, through the spirit of Christ that lives in us. David goes on to say, I shall not want, or basically, I shall not be in want. The economy may fall, maybe you've lost your job or got reduced hours, or maybe something else not even related to the stuff happening right now. But our employers are not our providers. Our jobs are not our source, and the economy does not dictate how we are doing. Well, at least not when we are trusting Jesus as our shepherd. He is our provider, period. Verse 2 goes on to say, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. You know, this is about peace. Even when the world is in chaos around us, when we don't understand what is happening, when we feel lied to by leaders and we don't know who to trust, we can still have peace. The world does not dictate how I feel. And when I can fully trust God, I have peace. I don't worry that I might accidentally take the mark or worry about what a cashless society may mean or whatever else is going around. But I can trust God for wisdom. I can understand those things and I can still lean on God for that wisdom, protection, and knowledge. I don't have to worry that I may be misunderstood or that I must defend my viewpoint. I know that God is my justice and in the midst of turmoil in this world, I experience peace. Not because the storm isn't coming, but because he who can either sleep through the storm or calm the storm is in me. Verse three goes on, he restores my soul. You know, we can feel weary when we haven't been walking in the spirit. A lot of people are so tired of what's going on right now and, and that's okay. I want the world to get fixed too, but we don't have to be subject to those feelings of helplessness, exhaustion, or just wanting to give up. If you've gotten caught up in the media or have had fear or anxiety, that's okay. Maybe you haven't been looking at the situation through the spirit. It can be hard to trust Jesus in all situations, but he restores our souls. When we shift to walking in the spirit, there's a refreshing that just washes over us. Our emotions don't shift with every new story that surfaces. He is restoring our souls. Like Romans 12, 2 says, we are being less conformed to the world and our minds are being transformed to be more like Christ. David goes on to say, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You know, we so often think of being led in righteousness as being led to live without sin. And, and that's true. But what I am thinking of specifically as I read this and am cognizant of today's social climate, I believe God can lead us in how to respond to people without sin, or better, how to respond and interact with people in love. You know, He leads us in love. He can lead our responses, our thoughts, our words. When we surrender to Him, we can and we will respond out of love, His love even when it feels really, really hard to love. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. No matter how scary our world gets, no matter how real the danger becomes, He is with us. He protects us. He is on our side. And when we find ourselves having to traverse dangerous territory, we don't have to be in fear. Instead of being in fear, we can find ourselves in Him. He is always with us. Let's trust Him to do what He says He will do. And in verse 5 it says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
in the midst of evil, in the middle of hate, in the middle of everything going wrong, our shepherd prepares a table. He provides for us, fellowships with us. This isn't a meal on the run, but a leisurely meal. Preparing a table suggests lots of eating and reclining, relaxing and eating. God is not worried about the surrounding chaos. He is providing peace in the middle of a battlefield, peace in the middle of a storm. When we walk in the spirit, we are not unaware of what is happening, but we know there is one greater who is taking care of us. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Not only has God given us all that we need and abundantly provided for and protected us, but there is so much that we can be a blessing to others. Our cups overflow and that overflow can go to others to help them see Jesus as their shepherd, to trust in him as their Lord. It's not always about me, but Christ in me, which will naturally spill over to others. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. When we're walking in the Spirit, two defining traits that will accompany us are mercy and goodness. These are things we will experience in our own lives, but they are also traits that will flow out from our lives. So yes, we can show goodness and mercy to people that we disagree with. As we are in Christ, we can anyways. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This never ends. We can live this way always, even to the next life. We can dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And right now is a part of forever. Listen, I hope that this blessed you. I hope that this made sense to you. And I just, I'd encourage you to go ahead and read Psalm 23. Read it for yourself and ask God to show you anything that's in you that's contrary to his word that you can start believing. But just look to Jesus as your shepherd. He is taking care of us. No matter what's going on in the world, he remains our shepherd and he is good, and he is faithful. So God bless you. Bye.